and welcome back to Bump Love. Whoa, whoa, hold up. Not just Bump Love, but another edition of Baby Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome back to another episode of Baby Daddy or Dad Edition. Call it whatever you want. But we are having the gentlemen back. And why are we having them back? 24th January marks the International Day of Education. And we want to hear what these guys, what men, what fathers actually think about education. Now, we want to find out from the men in this show how education works in your minds. Uh, specifically, we're now talking about school, primary, nursery, university, secondary. How has that period of your life contributed to who you are right now. A friend of mine sent me a link and I was watching a clip um, on something called transformation education. And, and, this, and these guys are talking about the skills that we are not learning in school and yet skills that we actually need every day. And it occurred to me that our whole education system is, has prepared us for the uncertain. Because when you look at the education system now, and, and, and I put myself as a person who went to school back in the time when it was important to have good grades, and now we're in a, we're in a situation where good grades alone are not important, that even someone who doesn't perform well in school can actually become a very successful person. And yet in the past, you never thought about it that way. In the past, when you went to school, you had to have good grades to be able to get a good career. Yeah. Um, and that has changed. It's totally, totally demystified now. And I was talking about how do you talk about, how do you teach empathy in school? How yeah. do you teach someone to deal with stress? Because there's no curriculum for that. And yet those are things that you're going to go through every day in your workplaces when you interact with people. How do you deal with disappointment? There's no, there's no part of the curriculum where it says, oh, today we're going to talk about disapp uh, disappointment and there'll be a test on it. Yeah. But you know that you're going to be disappointed in life. Yeah. You know? How do you deal with all these things? My education did not prepare me for this stuff. Yeah. But along the way, I have learned through interaction. And this is where culture is important. Because, because in a school, um, and we will see that in the school you have different cultures of people, people from the west, from the east, and so on and so forth. In other schools, you have cultures from other countries. Yeah. When this comes into a place, because there's a clash of cultures, you learn how to be tolerant. But you start to learn some of the th things and how people deal with stuff. When I first joined Kisu, it's a funny story. When I first joined Kisu as a teacher, I remember the, the head of Kampala International School, Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> the, the head of secondary then <laughs> called me a week later and told me, Robert, um, we need to talk. So I thought, I'm going to be fired after a week, you know? So I walk into her office and she tells me, you're doing a good job. job. The kids love you, they, you know, the, you're positive in class, but they have a problem understanding you. Like, well, my teaching is bad. I said, no, your accent. Like, oh, really? That's an issue. So I said, yeah, you, you've got to pick an accent, either British accent oh, wow. or an American accent oh, wow. because they don't That's understand, understand the Ugandan accent. So I actually had to go and learn yeah. how to speak to these kids. Wow. Yes, I had to. I, I, I yes, studied. But it's, yes. but it's stuff that I was never taught. Yeah. So that when you asked me, I, I collected the British, the American, the Australian, put them all together and came up with my own. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but what it taught me is that education is a lifelong process. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you start. You will learn something on a daily basis as long as you are open-minded. Our education system sometimes closes us to the fact that you have to learn what the teacher is teaching you and that's all that you need. Yeah. But that's not where knowledge ends. That's probably where knowledge starts. Okay. And, and so it's, it's been, for me, it's been a journey that on a daily basis, I know that I'm going to learn something from just talking to someone yeah. or just observing, really. Yeah. I'll learn something. So, in this, so essentially, you, the education that you received here in Uganda prepared you for half of your life. The other half you had to get along, along the, way. the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, if somebody said, educate me on this, yeah. Shine more light on this. Yeah. Let me understand. Teach me. Convince me. Eh? Upgrade me to your level of knowledge so that I can become something. So the original education that I got, that is, I didn't do pre-primary and all this sophisticated, ostentatious education of middle class. What For me, it just started organically. P1, boom. 
my father, I remember, took me to school and fortunately for him, the genes, I think, were working because okay. I started just scoring fast in class, fast in class, Come fast on. in class. <laughs> and it worked for me, as he said, on the grading. Because by P3, I was attending a little bit of P4 and P5. Wow. The teachers would call me. I don't want people to think I'm a genius. I was just able to You're understand. Not he's not saying. No, no, he's You're not, not calling yourself a genius. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that, that, that is the, the, the book type where you learn things. Sometimes you cram the St. Lawrence Seaway, Tennessee Valley Authority. They, places you will probably yeah. never visit. Yeah. But you know, you know the president of Madagascar, you know the vice president, you know the capital city of Guyana. It doesn't help you in a village in Tororo where I was. Then there's also the education which helped me break from poverty. Because I, I grew up in a typical village setting. But education brought me to Kampala because there was only one university. If you're brilliant, you will go up to that university. So it kept bringing me from the feeder road to the main road of mile two to the main road, then to the first tarmac, then to where you can <laughs> get sandals, then where you can get shoes, then where you can get to a real class yeah. with bricks, because the other one is wad, uh, mud and water. Then you start competing with people from Namagunga. You hear Namagunga and you're like, guys, and you're like, but because you're already in the system, you compete and you, you find that you become a part of a smaller group until we were 52 who went to the law school in 1991 and I'm like hey from that whole long journey now the the whole country has picked 52 yeah. and we are going to do law school we did law school went to LDC started work joined the different organizations now in Bank of Uganda and that is the role of education in my life yeah. And that's what I'm trying to take to my children. Yeah. That's now the connection to Bump Love. Eh? Yeah. Women, children, <laughs> and the future. You have to throw that seed. <laughs> I, I think it should be your PR. <laughs> um, I mean, I have, I have very disparate views from these academic overachievers here. People like this, the lawyers, they, they just always have looked down on us. <laughs> and, and I speak for a lot of fathers out there. <laughs> I mean, so so my my experience is, um, I think that I think that um, going back to what uh, Robert was saying, and and I think he made some very important points, that there are certain things the world needs today that you cannot find in school. Yeah. And and I've been I've been having conversations like this with with some of my friends. I've said, listen, if you really think about it now, where we are and where the world is, what you need is numeracy and literacy. Yeah. If you can count. You and you can read and write. Everything else is a skill that can be teachable. And, and, and I've been saying, listen, wouldn't it be amazing if after primary school, children just sort of picked a career? Yeah. Because they can read, they can write, they can teach themselves anything because that's where the world is going. Yeah. But, but also you have to be cognizant that attitudes and views like this sort of tend to widen the inequalities that exist in Around our society the, already. Yes. But, but also, even in the traditional uh, education system, there were inequalities. Yeah. I mean, like, you, you I, I remember at university, when you walk in and if you're from Namiliango or you're from St. Mary's, and those boys from, mm, from um, Chibuli Muslim, they want to talk, but the English is broken. It's a challenge. Yeah. It's, and, and uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, there are guys from Chibuli who speak very good English. Yeah. But like, for example, like the guys from Kawempo Muslim, it was always like exciting. So, because you'll be like, I didn't know that word can conjugate to that. <laughs> so, 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 I, and, and I find that, and don't get me wrong, I'm not being, I'm not being elitist, but I'm saying that, that the world in which you live is negotiated by, for example, it's negotiated by language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people who speak and communicate well get better advantages. They walk into interviews and we call it bullshitting or BSing, but they BS their way. Some people are able to BS their way through life without yeah, having strong because. technical knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, the one university is not admitting only 52 of the techos. Mm. They're admitting a lot more. So there's, there is, the world has sort of created the space for strong communicators, strong expressors. And, and those things are not taught. They don't teach you in class because they teach you how to read boy and they, t they teach you how to spell stupendous. But then they don't say, listen, when you speak to people, you look at them in the eye, yeah. you stand with your shoulders straight. Mm. This is how you express yourself. And the world will recognize those skills yeah. and reward you for being that different. Yeah. And, 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 and so when you ask me about 
sort of my education that's what my education did for me oh, okay. yes i learned about the tennessee valley authority and the st lawrence seaway and photosynthesis but i look back and i think that that the biggest gift my education was able to do was put me in a class of people who are well spoken mm -hmm. good peers and what those peers did is their own confidence and their own intellectual smarts rubbed off on me so i didn't have to be very smart i just had to look like i be smart if i get in the room then we shall work hard yeah. <laughs> and when we i shall think work about on that skill. Yes, if i look about my life and i think about where where the world is going it's about that it's about getting the door yeah and yeah. then and, and and then you know sort of build the skills and i mean whether it's right or wrong because there's getting into the door and you've got into the door as a great doctor who has very good who can speak really well but can't um, um administer medicine mm, yes. because well, because you don't have the skill, which that is what is the true. education... <laughs> but Manuela, a very interesting thing that you, that, that, that you mentioned there is that if you think about the, the, the jobs now that didn't exist a decade ago yeah. when That's we true. were in university. That's very true. So when I first started working, people got fired for being on Facebook at work. Yeah. Now we pay people mm -hmm. to, be on to, Facebook. to be on Facebook all day. <laughs> so you are not checking the DMs. <laughs> you are not. You are not. <laughs> this <laughs> is. Yes. <laughs> I mean, see, I'm see, see what non-education <laughs> did. For so, 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 there are jobs now. I mean, I mean, very soon. Where was I? In, we were reading about it, and this is the evolution of the web. Because WhatsApp now has payments. WhatsApp being a whatsapp admin is going to be a job yeah, yeah and you yeah. think about it, like people ask you where did you go in life you say i'm a whatsapp admin and that's a real yeah, thing yeah. So, so <laughs> we're laughing now but <laughs> you <laughs> they start now. getting millions but, but but so think about that think about the jobs that didn't exist so so the world that comes with the internet the world that comes with you know the simplest things that that are now necessary for us content curation people said do you what do you mean to be an influencer i just go on my phone on the internet and i do things like that yeah. And I get paid. Mm. I say, what do you mean you get paid? I, I bought a house, I bought a car from being an influencer. If you said that to traditionally educated my parents' mm -hmm. generation, mm. and guys like this. What did you say? But take what has phrase. happened since you, <laughs> you <laughs> got out of bump loud? Teko is phrase. But that's that's what I'm saying. So another thing I wanted to say is is that's another thing. Because there are new career opportunities mm. yeah. that are coming in a world where it doesn't matter whether you said mass com or law or business admin or bba whatever you studied this economy is about if you're willing to apply and learn then there is a space for you okay. that's what i wanted to close with. well Lenny. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think i sat in the right seat because a lot of what colin has said i can relate to because um my education what it did for me and i really have to thank uh my mom for this because she fought to ensure that i went to the schools that i did yeah so what that then ha uh, has done for me especially where i am now is it has given me great peers yeah great peers in the sense that um they're, they're kind of people who are always pushing to achieve the next thing mm -hmm. so even you don't want to be the one who is hanging behind so I even you, you when you want to at least sleep call you're like ah, ah but colin is there on tv even me i must push you yeah. know uh but then also what <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know why I was <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. then also what what it does for you is I know we, we we don't like to hear some of these things but this is the the world that we live in. Yeah. There are doors that have opened for me because of the schools that I went to. Yeah. You know, I go in there and I mention my primary school they're like, "Oh, you must be you must have something in you, mm. you know." When I mention when I mention my my secondary school that I went to which really is the best school in the in the land. Wow, which one is that? Uh, St. Mary's yeah. College, Subi. Duh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, because when, when I mentioned that, the, you know, you see someone's eyes on the other side, on the interviewing table, go, well, you must have something, you yes. know? Then they are more willing to listen to you. Yes. Not that they're not willing to send the other person, yes. but it means that I'd maybe not have to work as hard as someone from um, some other school yeah. would probably have to do. Yeah. So, what it, what it had also done for me, yes, it has helped me to acquire skills, because that all led to me, you know, getting admitted to law school. But, but on top of that, is it gave me a platform mm -hmm. to be able to understand, have a deeper understanding of what education really means. Mm. Because um, I think it was in my high school, where, uh, in SMAC, where we had uh, a guy, Brother Martin, whose job was to come on assembly every day and literally tell us, you are the best you are in the best school because you're in the best school you cannot be ordinary mm. so from the longest time i've had someone drum it in my head oh, it must be drummed in your head for four years 
that you are not just any other person. So you can't just do ordinary things. Oh, so wow. even now when I'm doing something, I keep asking myself, but is this ordinary or can I do better? Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then because I've been uh, privileged to be in the circles that I'm in, again, a little bit because of the schools that I've gone to, I now get the opportunity to interact with people from all over the world. And yeah. that has opened up to me a whole Horse. kaleidoscope of knowledge that I'm able to tap into wow. and that is pushing me to be I even better than... <laughs> yes! <laughs> we now know even schools <laughs> <does that. laughs> Even better than, than, than where we are now. But crucially, and, and I think this is to... I don't know if it's Bob's point, that education does not stop. So, so I know of, of colleagues who you know, are still riding on that wave of, I was in this primary school, so I'm a hard guy. And they have not really done much for themselves. Me, I was in this secondary school. You know? I know people at some school that I will not mention who are always you know, riding the thing of, me, I went to this school, so you should respect me. I and I'm like, school. I hear you, but what do you have to show now? Yeah. You know? Because the world we're in now, and I think which Colin can attest to, is if you're not willing to keep adapting, man, they'll leave you behind. Yeah, that's very One true. One of my very good friends is a lawyer, but he's a social media manager. Oh, wow. So he's one of those guys who companies pay, very highly, by the way, to go on Facebook the whole day. Facebook, Twitter, and I don't know, all these other social media. LinkedIn and you know? TikTok. Huh? And I think in Colin's job now, he has to know the numbers yes. on the socials. You yeah. know? Something which, you know, we'll probably have. We have not yeah. been. Yeah. That's very true. So now knowing how education has affected your life right now, you have kids in the picture now. Yeah. Your very own kids yeah. who are now going to school to us about that process about you know what was behind what were you thinking or how did you arrive at the particular school your children are in right now or that might they might go into in a few years Colin are you okay <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I really I look, I look okay, okay. But, but really deep down inside mm. I am, I am facing a lot of... Homeschooling. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not a homeschooling person. I, I just, I feel very attacked by the way Manuela asked this question. <laughs> she seems, she, she seems she to have some inside knowledge. Yes. <laughs> she seems to imply that I had some input in the decision. <laughs> and, and, and in answering, I want to say that I arrived there with the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> and someone said, this is where the children are studying. Uh -huh. And I said, the, can we do it this time? Yes. Can we do it for seven years? Yes. Okay. So but the wallet. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's, uh, so, so, so my situation is actually quite unique because I've got two children and I've got four children and, uh, and the two of them don't live with us. They don't live with me and my wife. And so they go to a different school because that's the school their mother chose. Okay. And then uh, my son who lives with me and my wife who's in school going age, he goes to a different school because that's the school uh, my wife chose. Mm. But also, so, 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 and that makes it very interesting because what it does is it, it then, it, it, it shows you, for me, it says you can do the traditional African man thing which is say, oh, my children will go to the school. Yes, but if you put all of them there, then you must. There's all the logistics that go around with that. You must pick this one, and then where? What do? So, so for me, that was quite interesting. So I said, um, "Listen, you pick the school, and then we shall pay for it. Yeah, we shall pay for the school." But I and, and I, but I still continue to hold the views that uh, that the school is there to ensure that you can read and write, and that I you can, can count, count because eventually, I mean. So, so there's, there's a child out of, I think, China or the US, world's richest child, and he does, he does... Oh, the and, YouTube guy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 That's what he does. Yes, yeah. and the kids who say, YouTube. if you're going to race, if you're going to be uh, Hamilton, you have to start go cutting at eight, yeah. so that by yeah, 15, at five. at five, so you can get into the Formula One at 15. Yeah. The, I am very open and aware that, that the children will come and say, you know, I want to be a singer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and their voices are good until they're 15. So, so when do you lose the opportunity? Yeah. So, so for now, whatever school they go to is, is not as important as the values that you sort of input in them yeah. and that conversation. I mean, I would like, I mean, I don't talk as much about my St. Mary's College Kisubi experience as you do. <laughs> But Why that's is it <laughs> 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 oh, you know, 
I was expelled from there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 us, us who went there, we, we still we I mean we're, what you could do we're still in the, the most successful smart students mm. now. Former students mm. and see how he's rich, then we could sue for that school. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. So, what, what I was going to say is. is yeah, you know, <laughs> no, 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 no. Because he was really. You should. No, no, no. no. So, 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 you know why, why I got lucky is then because I went to Namilango and then in Namilango as the head prefect and then I had all those other cool things and I was a cooler guy then. So, I mean, both were some groups. So let me let me explain to you how it's exciting, because you're in the WhatsApp groups of two schools. But because I also went to Bugema Adventist, yes. So I'm also in that WhatsApp group. Yeah. My friend, the guys in Smack are saying, guys, we need to put the circle together. The guys in Namibia are saying, guys, there's rugby this weekend. The guys of Bugema, they send you a, a, a meal. prayer. They say, Mwanide <laughs> Chems. <laughs> the world is richer. It shows you the rage. Yes. Yeah. And and I am I am in my heart of hearts. I know that you know what i wish my kid had this yeah, smart experience yeah, yeah. but yeah. i'm also aware that yeah. that that those things require investments they require the child applying themselves mm -hmm. and wherever they 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 get up wherever they get it if if the values are right and their heart is in the right place it should yeah. be good yes yeah. i keep telling people that the choice of the school i went to in primary was really dependent on how how well they came in that school <laughs> because then we're really problem that's children yeah that's so now you is, yeah that's the school you need to that's go what to. you need no, that's what you need and it shaped us it did yeah. shape us right um but i realized that where i lived on now uh, in makere living on terrace there are four schools that mm. the children in makere actually went to yes they were either in, yeah they were either in buganda road nakasero kitante or bat valley, or bat valley. Yeah. Obuganda and, and Road or something like yes, that. Yes, yeah. Obuganda Road. A few of them later on to Kampala parents, but most of us went to those schools. And the, the university bus system actually picks kids from those schools. So, so, but now with my kids, I wanted a school, a small enough school, because the formative years of education are very important. Yes. Because, because that's where you start to form some of those interesting characteristics of a child. A child is shy until they get to school, then you give them a platform to express themselves. If that doesn't come out, then they may be shy forever. A child is timid until you get them to in, in a school where you allow them, you know what, to take charge of a classroom. So I wanted them to be in a small enough school for the teachers to be able to recognize. Then after that, they can go and they will fit anywhere. Yeah. So the, 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 the kindergarten school was important for me. I wanted a school that allowed my children to express themselves, but also was small enough for them to have an individual education. Mm. Now I speak at, as an educationist. Individual education is very, very, very important because then you know what every child is able to do, how they struggle, and how you can help, help elevate them. them. In primary school, then you can get them into what everyone does. Now, secondary school is very, very different. And I, and I teach in a secondary school. And what we have in our, in our schools in, in Uganda is we have mixed abilities all being Put taught together. as abled students. <coughs> which is a very, very terrible system because you can't have a, a class of 60 people and they all learn the same way, they all learn at the same pace and therefore they examine at this, at on the, the same, same content. On the same scale, yeah. And that's what frustrates students. That, that Bob, who's very, very good at mathematics and really, really poor at English, is being examined at the on the same content and being taught the same way with Colin, who is good at all these things. And so Colin with Excel in his subjects right. and I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> it's an example. It's an example. <laughs> 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 I put a bad example, yeah? They don't even call you. They just put the update on uh, status. <laughs> like that guy. <laughs> he lied. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so for me, I feel that the education system that I went through and, and the, the way I look at education now is I was at a conference, uh, a student's conference, and, and these are some of the things that I want my kids to go through. That they go to places and interact with kids from all over the world and hear what young people are saying. Because young people listen to young people. Yeah. We, 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 for us, we talk to them and impose on them. They listen to each other. And this young lady who was addressing a group of about 300 students from all over the world, and she was telling them, you need to understand that the education you need now should be preparing you for jobs which don't exist. Yeah, that's true. If you are in a school which is teaching you and training you for a job that is in existence right now, you're getting the wrong education. Yeah. Because wow. by the time you go through school, that's you should powerful. be prepared 
for the world that is going to be present five years from now. Wow. If your education system is still teaching you solving today's mm -hmm. problems, that education system doesn't help. Unfortunately, yeah. that's what we have. Mm. Yeah. And that's not where the role of the parents come. When you say when you say we, you mean the rest of us except you. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. But giving you know, it to others. It's, it's me, I've been here in our traditional smart, smart mm. white, traditional system. Mm. Mm. Excelling. So now I believe that because I've you know I've not done too bad mm, in this system. Kawa. By default, my children should, should go be. through this system. Yes. Now, she, on the other hand, she has also not done too badly in the international school system. Naturally, she also feels, you know, uh, let's go visit Kisu, let's go visit ISU, let's go visit, you know, James Day, who was still in existence, because, I mean, that's, that's where our kids should be going. These are the options. Now, I have two arguments. One is definitely my bank balance. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> the wallet. Yes, the wallet. But, but, but the second one is, I've been asking myself, you know, whereas I see the merits these schools have, you know, in terms of the individualistic learning, in terms of, you know, the exposure for our kids, because now we're... cultural Yes, yes, yes. We're, in a, we're well and truly in a global village. I keep asking myself, for our Ugandan system, I need to take my children to a school that's going to give them the best chance to succeed here. Okay? Now, that's where, of course, the debate now gets a bit yeah, murky. Yeah, because who says hmm? they'll be here? Who says they'll be here, yeah. first of all? Secondly, um... Our schools are ideally teaching kids for jobs that already exist, yeah. okay? Or that are even getting extinct. Or that are getting extinct because I'm a lawyer. But the kind of law that we practice today is evolving on, yeah. a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. The way we practice law in Uganda today is far different yeah. from the way we practice law even five years ago, yeah. okay? So even me who is here, I'm having to do so many things, refresh our courses, learn, adapt. So... Um, and we're having to, to ask ourselves, okay, you, you want to take the kid to where? Nakasero Primary School? Are you sure? It may have worked for you then, but is it really going to give our kids the best platform? Okay? And now also for the international school, because we so also have that stigma of, ha, rainbow kids. Eh? Yeah. My kid will come here with some uh, weird accent. Is um, are my children going to really be best suited to survive here? Yeah. So that's why it gets a bit confusing. It's still ongoing, so yeah. we have not yet so resolved not yet. it. Yeah. Okay. Teko. <laughs> earlier, my education was all up country. Yeah. When I came down country, which is Kampala, I joined the Kololo SS from there, City High, from City High University Law School. But now let me run down where my kids are. There's one in Taiba, there's one in uh, Green Hill, one was in Abisunsa, one was in, uh, the second one again is in Taiba. So that's the kind of school. That's interesting. Why did, how did you come to that decision? Uh, yes, so now, now uh, the ones in Taiba, it's a character thing. Where do I feel my daughter fits more? Ah. more fits most. Okay. How will they gel with, with you know, the, the stress? You know, there are some schools like uh, the one, some neighbors where the litmus is. You've read that in the house where you don't shout that yeah. they're, 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 they're obedient. You tell them, please move this. They think that canes are like for that decoration <laughs> where they yeah. put in it. In the other place, they are for. <laughs> Then uh, there's also the issue of money, mm. but it hasn't been so much of my problem because mm. I work where I see money being printed, mm. Mm. Uh, see so it? I can lawfully though. Then proximity. Green Hill. I live in Muyenga and Green Hill for purposes of transporting kids to school in mm. the morning and all that. It came naturally, yeah. and also mm. it's a good school in terms of kids' upbringing. It's not. Uh, all of a sudden, so many schools came in Kampala, which mm. had some kind of uh, a, a common denominator of like Green Hill, Kampala Junior Academy and what. So depending on which side you stayed, those were the schools that yeah. kids were going to. Then Nabisusa was the traditional art. You know, when, when, when results come out, your wife's friends, the grandfathers, grandmothers, if everybody has an opinion of which school. Then there are those say, take them to a traditional school, take them to whatever. So one of them ended in Nabisusa, which was a good school. I wanted to ask something on what, what, what he said about... Uh, no, 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 about... about uh, and maybe it, it links back into what uh, Robert had said, Bob, that, that... And maybe also ties back into what Lenny said, that the idea that what the traditional schools did was almost focused on a slightly more wholesome education ethic 
which is not very prevalent in the, the now the, proliferating the private now. schools. Yes. Yeah. So the first the first yeah. best schools. Yes. 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 And 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 so maybe maybe there is something there about that wholesome education. Yeah. You can you can make you can call it around faith best. Yeah. You can you can say it's because those schools have been around for a long time, 50, 80 years. They have alumni who are who are people who are visible and are present in society. So there is the the school has a it has a an, an imperative to sort of uh, ask the the students to be greater than than, than their grades. Their, yes. W whereas you f you tend to find the private schools tend like to say Ram, you, greater than their grades. Yeah. Yes. That's true. That's true. Yes. He right. smart. He told right. us. That's he what he learned. He, he said for him. That's the he learned how to persuade. <laughs> how to <laughs> <blow> <laughs> me. <laughs> me. Uh, so I don't know where you're at. We're coming back. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk curriculum, the education system in Uganda, traditional versus international schools. I mean, we've touched a bit on them, but we're going to get a little a little bit deeper so see you in the next episode of bump love in the bump love baby daddy edition <laughs> see you guys <laughs>